First Peter chapter 1 Peter, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, to those who have settled down alongside of a pagan population, sown as seed throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen out ones, this choice having been determined by the foreordination of God the Father, those chosen out to be recipients of the setting apart work of the Spirit resulting in obedience of faith, and this resulting in the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, sanctifying grace to you and tranquilizing peace be multiplied. Let the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be eulogized, who impelled by his abundant mercy caused us to be born again so that we have a hope which is alive, this living hope having been made actual through the intermediate instrumentality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ out from among those who are dead, resulting in an inheritance imperishable and undefiled and that does not fade away, which inheritance has been laid up and is now kept guarded in safe deposit in heaven for you who are constantly being kept guarded by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in a last season, which is epical and strategic in its significance. In which last season you are to be constantly rejoicing with the joy that expresses itself in a triumphant exuberance, although for a little while at the present time, if perchance there is need for it, you have been made sorrowful in the midst of many different kinds of testings, in order that the approval of your faith which faith was examined by testing for the purpose of being approved, that approval being much more precious than the approval of gold which perishes, even though that gold be approved by fire testing, may be discovered after scrutiny to result in praise and glory and honor at the time of the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom not having seen you love because of his preciousness, in whom now not seeing yet believing you are to be rejoicing with an inexpressible and glorified joy upon the occasion of your receiving the promised consummation of your faith, which is the final salvation of your souls. Concerning which salvation prophets conducted an exhaustive inquiry and search, those who prophesied concerning that particular grace destined for you, searching as to what season or character or season the Spirit of Christ who was in them was making plain when he was testifying beforehand concerning the sufferings of Christ and the glories which would come after these sufferings, to whom it was revealed that not for themselves were they ministering these things, which now have been reported to you through those who have announced the glad tidings to you by the Holy Spirit, who was sent down on a commission from heaven, which things angels have a passionate desire to stoop way down and look into, like the cherubim above the mercy seat, who gazed at the sprinkled blood and wondered at its meaning. Wherefore, having put out of the way once for all everything that would impede the free action of your mind, be calm and collected in spirit, and set your hope perfectly, wholly and unchangeably, without doubt and despondency, upon the grace that is being brought to you upon the occasion of the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not assuming an outward expression which does not come from your inner being as a child of God, and is not representative of it, an expression patterned after that expression which you formerly had in the ignorance of your passionate desires, but after the pattern of the one who called you, the Holy One, you yourselves also become holy persons in every kind of behavior, because it has been written and is on record, you be holy individuals, because as for myself, I am holy. And in view of the fact that you call on as Father, him who judges, not with a partiality based upon mere outward appearance, but with an impartiality, in accordance with each individual's work, with a wholesome, serious caution, order your behavior during the time of your residence as a foreigner, a citizen of heaven living for the time being amongst the unsaved on this earth, which is foreign territory governed by the God of this world, knowing as you do that not by means of perishable things, little coins of silver and gold, were you set free once for all by the payment of ransom money, out of and away from your feudal manner of life, handed down from generation to generation, but with costly blood, highly honored, blood as of a lamb that is without blemish and spotless, 
the blood of Christ, who indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the universe was laid, but was visibly manifested at the closing years of the times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, the one who raised him out from among those who are dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope might be in God. Having purified your souls by means of your obedience to the truth, resulting in not an assumed but a genuine affection and fondness for the brethren, an affection and fondness that springs from your hearts by reason of the pleasure you take in them, from the heart, love each other with an intense reciprocal love that springs from your hearts because of your estimation of the preciousness of the brethren, and which is divinely self-sacrificial in its essence, having been begotten again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the word of God, which lives and abides. For every kind of flesh is as grass, and its every kind of glory is as the flower of grass, The grass was caused to wither away, and the flower fell off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. And this is the word which in the declaration of the good news was preached to you. Wherefore, having put away once for all every wickedness and every craftiness and hypocrisies and envies and all slanderings, as newborn infants do intensely yearn for the unadulterated spiritual milk in order that by it you may be nourished and make progress in your salvation in view of the fact that you tasted that the Lord is kind, loving, and benevolent, toward whom we are constantly drawing near, himself in character a living stone, indeed by men repudiated after they had tested him for the purpose of of proving him, in which investigation they found him to be that which did not meet their specifications, but in the sight of God a chosen out one and highly honored and precious. And you yourselves also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house to be a priesthood that is holy, bringing up to God's altars spiritual sacrifices which are acceptable to God through the mediatorship of Jesus Christ. Because of this it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone, one chosen out, a cornerstone, highly honored and precious, and the one who rests his faith on him shall positively not be disappointed. For you, therefore, who are believers, is the honor and the preciousness of the living stone. But to those who are disbelievers, the stone which the builders repudiated, after they had tested him for the purpose of approving him, finding him to be that which did not meet their specifications. This stone became a head cornerstone and an obstacle stone against which one cuts and a rock which trips one, even to those who, because they are non-persuasible, stumble up against the word, to which action of stumbling they were indeed appointed. But as for you, you are a race chosen out, king priests, a set-apart nation, a people formed for God's own possession, in order that you might proclaim abroad the excellencies of the one who out of darkness called you into participation in his marvelous light, who at one time were not a people, but now are God's people, who were not subjects of mercy, but now have become objects of mercy. Divinely loved ones, loved by God, I beg of you, please, as aliens and those who have settled down alongside of pagan unsaved people should, be constantly holding yourselves back from the passionate cravings which are fleshly by nature. Fleshly, and that they come from the totally depraved nature. Cravings of such a nature that, like an army carrying on a military campaign, they are waging war, hurling themselves down upon your soul, holding your manner of life among the unsaved steadily beautiful in its goodness, in order that in the thing in which they defame you as those who do evil, namely your Christianity, because of your works beautiful in their goodness, which they are constantly, carefully, and attentively watching, they may glorify God in the day of his overseeing care. Put yourselves in the attitude of submission to, thus giving yourselves to the implicit obedience of, every human regulation for the sake of the Lord, whether to a king, as one who is supereminent, or to governors, as those sent by him to inflict punishment upon those who do evil, and to give praise to those who do good. For so is the will of God, that by doing good, you might be reducing to silence the ignorance of men who are unreflecting and unintelligent, doing all this as those who have their liberty, and not as those who are holding their liberty as a cloak of wickedness, but as those who are God's bondmen. Pay honor to all, 
be loving the brotherhood, be fearing God, be paying honor to the king. Household slaves, put yourselves in constant subjection with every fear and implicit obedience to your absolute lords and masters, not only to those who are good at heart and sweetly reasonable, satisfied with less than their due, but also to those who are against you. For this subjection to those who are against you is something which is beyond the ordinary course of what might be expected and is therefore commendable. Namely, when a person, because of the conscious sense of his relation to God, bears up under pain, suffering unjustly. For what sort of fame is it when you fall short of the mark and are pummeled with a fist, you endure this patiently? But when you are in the habit of doing good and then suffer constantly for it, and this you patiently endure, this is an unusual and not to be expected action, and therefore commendable in the sight of God. For to this very thing you were called, namely, to patient endurance in the case of unjust punishment, because Christ also suffered on your behalf, leaving behind for you a model to imitate, in order that by close application you might follow in his footprints, who never in a single instance committed a sin, and in whose mouth, after careful scrutiny, there was found not even craftiness, who when his heart was being wounded with an accursed sting, and when he was being made the object of harsh rebuke and biting, never retaliated, and who while suffering never threatened, but rather kept on delivering all into the keeping of the one who judges righteously, who himself carried up to the cross our sins in his body and offered himself there as on an altar, doing this in order that we, having died with respect to our sins, might live with respect to righteousness, by means of whose bleeding stripe, the word stripe is in the singular here, a picture of our Lord's back after the scourging, one mass of raw, quivering flesh, with no skin remaining, trickling with blood, by means of whose bleeding stripe you were healed. For you were as sheep that are going astray and are wandering about, but now have been turned back to the shepherd and spiritual overseer of your souls. In like manner, wives, put yourselves in subjection to your own husbands with implicit obedience, in order that even though certain ones obstinately refuse to be persuaded by the word and are therefore disobedient to it, they may through the manner of life of their wives, without a word from the wives, be gained. Having viewed attentively your pure manner of life, which is accompanied by a reverential fear, let your adornment not be that adornment which is from without and merely external, namely an elaborate gathering of the hair into knots and a lavish display of gold ornaments or the donning of apparel. But let that adornment be the hidden personality in the heart, imperishable in quality, the adornment of a meek and quiet disposition, which is in the sight of God very costly. For thus formally also the holy women, the ones whose hope is directed to and rests in God, were accustomed to adorn themselves, putting themselves in subjection with implicit obedience to their own husbands, as Sarah was in the habit of rendering obedience to Abraham, calling him Lord, whose children, namely Sarah's, you become if the whole course of your life is in the doing of good and you are not being caused to fear by even one particle of terror." Husbands, in like manner, let your home life with them be governed by the dictates of knowledge, they being the weaker instrument, the feminine, holding in reserve for them particularly honor as to those who are also fellow inheritors with you of the grace of life, and this in order that no satanic inroads be made into your prayers. Now, to come to a conclusion, be all of you like-minded, be sympathetic, have a brotherly affection for one another. Be tender-hearted, be humble-minded, not giving back evil in exchange for evil, or verbal abuse in exchange for verbal abuse, but instead, on the contrary, be constantly blessing, since for this very purpose you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. For he who desires to be loving life and to see good days, let him stop the natural tendency of his tongue from evil, and the natural tendency of his lips to the end that they speak no craftiness, but let him rather at once and once for all turn away from evil and let him do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it, because the Lord's eyes are directed in a favorable attitude toward the righteous, and his ears are inclined to their petitions. But the Lord's face is against those who practice evil things. And who is he that will do you evil if you become zealots for the good? 
But if even you should perchance suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are spiritually prosperous ones. Moreover, do not be affected with fear of them by the fear which they strive to inspire in you. Neither become agitated, but set apart Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being those who are ready to present a verbal defense to everyone who asks you for a logical explanation concerning the hope which is in all of you, but doing this with meekness and a wholesome serious caution having a conscience unimpaired, in order that in the very thing in which they defame you, they may be put to shame, those who spitefully abuse, insult, and traduce your good behavior which is in Christ. For it is better when doing good, if perchance it be the will of God that you be suffering, rather than when doing evil. Because Christ also died once for all in relation to sins, a just one on behalf of unjust ones, in order that he might provide you with an entree into the presence of God, having in fact been put to death with respect to the flesh, his human body, but made alive with respect to the spirit, his human spirit, by which human spirit also having proceeded, he made a proclamation to the imprisoned spirits who were at one time rebels when the long suffering of God waited out to the end in the days of Noah while the ark was being made ready in which eight souls were brought safely through the time of the deluge by means of the intermediate agency of water, which water also, as a counterpart, now saves you, namely baptism, not a putting off of filth of flesh, but the witness of a good conscience toward God, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God, having proceeded into heaven, there having been made subject to him angels and authorities and powers." Therefore, in view of the fact that Christ suffered with respect to the flesh, you also yourselves put on as armor the same mind, because the one who has suffered with respect to the flesh has done with sin, with a view to his no longer living the rest of his time while in his physical body in the sphere of the cravings of men, but in the sphere of the will of God. For adequate has been the time that is now passed and done with you to have carried to its ultimate conclusion the counsel of the pagans, the unsaved conducting yourself as you have done in disgusting sensualities, in cravings, in wine-guzzlings, in carousals, in drinking bouts, and in unlawful idolatries, in which they think it a thing alien to you, that you do not run in a troop like a band of revelers with them in the same slough of dissoluteness, speaking evil of you, who, namely the unsaved, shall give an account to the one who is holding himself in readiness to judge the living and the dead." For for this purpose also, to those who are now dead, was the good news preached, in order that they might be judged according to men with respect to their physical existence, but live according to God with respect to their spirit existence. But of all things the end has come near. Be of sound mind, therefore, and be calm and collected in spirit with a view to giving yourselves to prayer. Before all things, in order of importance, having fervent love among yourselves, because love hides a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without murmuring. In whatever quality or quantity each one has received a gift, be ministering it among yourselves as good stewards of the variegated grace of God. If anyone speaks as utterances of God, let them be. If anyone ministers, let him minister as out of the strength which God supplies in order that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, in whom there is the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Divinely loved ones, divinely loved by God, stop thinking that the smelting process which is operating among you and which has come to you for the purpose of testing you is a thing alien to you. But in so far as you share in common with the sufferings of Christ, be rejoicing, in order that also at the time of the unveiling of his glory, you may rejoice exultingly. In view of the fact that you have cast in your teeth, as it were, revilings because of the name of Christ, spiritually prosperous are you, because the spirit of glory, even the spirit of God, is resting with refreshing power upon you. Now let no one of you continue to be suffering reproach as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a self-appointed overseer in other men's matters. But if he suffer reproach as a Christian, let him not continue to be ashamed, but let him be glorifying God because of this name. For the time is now of the judgment beginning at the house of God. But if it starts first with us, what shall be the end of those who are not obeying the good news of God? And if he who is righteous is with difficulty being saved, 
He that is impious and a sinner, where shall he appear? Therefore, also let those who are suffering according to the will of God be constantly committing the safekeeping of their souls by a continuance in the doing of good to a faithful creator. Elders, therefore, who are among you, I exhort, I who am your fellow elder and one who saw the sufferings of the Christ and who has been retained as a witness to bear testimony concerning them, who also am a fellow partaker of the glory which is about to be unveiled. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, doing so not by reason of constraint put upon you, but willingly, according to God, not in fondness for dishonest gain, but freely, nor yet as lording it in a high-handed manner over the portions of the flock assigned to you, but as becoming patterns for the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you shall receive the victor's unfading crown of glory. Likewise, younger ones, be in subjection to the elders." Moreover, all of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes himself to those who set themselves above others, but gives grace to those who are lowly. Permit yourselves, therefore, to be humbled under the mighty hand of God, in order that you he may exalt in an appropriate season, having deposited with him once for all the whole of your worry, because to him it is a matter of concern respecting you. Be of a sober mind, be watchful. Your adversary who is a slanderer, namely the devil, as a lion roaring in fierce hunger, is constantly walking about, always seeking someone to be devouring. Stand immovable against his onset, solid as a rock in your faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being accomplished in your brotherhood which is in the world. But the God of every grace the one who summoned you in Christ with a view to his eternal glory, after you have suffered a little while, shall himself make you complete, shall establish you firmly, shall strengthen you, shall ground you as on a foundation. To him let there be ascribed this power forever and ever. Amen. Through Silvanus, the faithful brother, which is my estimate of him, briefly I am writing to you, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which stand. The church in Babylon, chosen out with you, sends greetings. Also Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace be with you all who are in Christ.